Now in this question then, we're given this particle of mass 30 kilograms and it's acted on upon by this force of P newtons at 20 degrees to the horizontal. It's moving at a constant speed as well on this rough horizontal plane where the coefficient of friction is 0.4. And we've got to find out the value of P then. So in order to do this, what I'd want to do is put in some more forces acting on the particle. We've got its weight, for instance, acting straight down. It's got a mass of 30 kilograms, so we're going to have 30 g newtons then, mg newtons. There'll be a contact force with the surface which acts directly upwards. We'll call that r newtons. And because it's moving at a constant speed, or just because it's moving actually, there's going to be friction opposing motion. So it's going to be moving to the right, so friction must act towards the left. And this has reached its limiting value. Some people tend to write F lim for things like this, which is equal to mu r, mu r newtons. Now we know that mu is 0.4, the coefficient of friction, so this is going to obviously equal 0.4 multiplied by r newtons. We know it's going at a constant speed, so therefore the acceleration must be zero. Zero meters per second per second. So that would be the kind of diagram I would draw first of all for this problem. Now if we're to try and find out what p is, we've got to do some resolving. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with resolving or splitting forces into components. If not, you can see the video for this or video tutorial on my website. Just look under resolving or splitting forces and you should find something on that. Okay, so let us start. Which way are we going to resolve? Well, we need to resolve vertically because I can see that if I resolve horizontally, I'm going to involve this R in the mu R part. So I'm going to need to find that out first of all. So I'm going to resolve vertically. So if we resolve vertically, looking at the resultant force acting in this vertical direction, that resultant force is going to equal zero because relative to this surface, even though it's moving to the right, relative to the surface in the upward direction, there's no acceleration. It's in relative equilibrium, so to speak. There's no overall resultant force. So we've got all of R acting upwards. So I put that in. And We've got minus 30 g newtons, all of that 30 g, the weight, acting downwards in the opposite direction to this. So it's going to be minus 30 g. But when it comes to p, p is inclined to this direction, as you can see, and we need to split into two components. And those components would be one towards the right and one upwards. The one towards the right has no effect because it's perpendicular to this direction. But the one upwards, because it doesn't contain this angle of 20 degrees in this 90 degree angle, will be using the sine of 20 degrees. Remember, it's cosine if you include the angle. If you exclude it, it becomes sine of the angle. So the upward component will be plus P sine 20 degrees. As for the frictional force, mu r, it doesn't come into play in this equation because all of it acts perpendicular to this direction here. So this is our resultant force and as I said earlier it must equal zero because relative to the plane in this direction it's not moving. Now we've got two unknowns here, so we're going to not be able to solve this at this stage. But anticipating that we're going to need R later on, I'm going to make R the subject. So if I rearrange this by adding 30G to both sides and subtracting P sine 20, we get R equals 30G minus P sine of 20 degrees. 
So we've got that value there. I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. I'm not going to call that equation one. So we need to now get another equation and just like we normally do, if you resolve in one direction, you're almost inevitably going to need to resolve in the perpendicular direction. So I'm going to resolve now horizontally, taking the in the direction of motion to be positive, so that's to the right. Now, if we look at the forces producing this motion, we've got part of the P, this horizontal component to the right. It contains the angle, so it's going to be P cos 20. So we've got P cos 20 pushing this particle to the right in the positive sense. Both the R and the 30G, the weight, don't come into this equation because they are forces that are perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. But we do have all of this frictional force opposing this positive direction. So it's going to be minus mu r minus 0.4 multiplied by r. And that's our overall force acting on the particle in this direction. And that overall force is equal to zero because there is no acceleration. If you were to use equals mass times acceleration, you'd have the mass 30 times zero. So there's no resultant force then on the particle. Now we know what R is, so we can substitute R into this equation here. So if we call this equation two, we can say sub equation one into equation two. And if we do that, we've got that therefore P cos 20 degrees minus 0.4 multiplied by R, 30G minus P sine 20 degrees equals zero. Now what, what I'd want to do is expand this bracket out. So we've got P cosine 20 degrees minus, and if you do 0.4 times 30, that's going to be 12. So it's 12 G, 12 G there. And then you've got minus 0.4 times minus P sine 20. So that's going to be positive value, 0.4 P sine 20 degrees. And that equals zero. So we've got two terms here that contain P and one that doesn't. So I'm going to add 12 G to both sides. And I'm going to factorize by bringing P out as a common factor across this term and this term. So we're going to have P multiplied by the cosine of 20 degrees and then plus for this term here 0.4 sine of 20 degrees. And then if I add 12G to both sides we get that equals 12G. So to get P obviously I just need to divide both sides by this bracket here. So taking G to be 9.8 as well we've got 12 multiplied by 9.8 all divided by then that bracket cosine of 20 degrees plus 0.4 sine of 20 degrees. And if you work this out on your calculator, what you should find you get is 109.242 and so on. And we need to round this up to some degree of accuracy. So let's suppose we round it to say three significant figures, it would be 109 newtons then to three significant figures for the value of P. Okay, um, if you do it to say two significant figures, it will be 110. Leave it up to you though to decide what you want to do it to. But you know the examiner should be able to see that result anyway and then uh, see that you are getting the right idea. Okay, well that's uh, that one done and I hope you've been able to follow that and uh, that brings us to the end then of that particular part of the question.